Hey guys, welcome back to our Real, real Love Scenario. Scenario. Shout out to all our real lovers out there. Hey, we are glad to, glad to be back. It is a special day. Yes. We got our first male guest. Woo! That makes me so happy. It is. It like, makes we need me some, so happy. Some male energy up in yes, here. Yes, Drake needs some I'm support. I'm by myself. Drake needs some support, and we got him some support today. We do. <laughs> and somebody from the crib, too. From the crib. Listen, this, I feel like that's like a DC thing. If you one of our DMV watchers, I'm like, from the crib. I heard them say that a couple of times. I said, that must mean from the same place as, as each other. As a Baltimorean, I'm a big fan of my DMV people, especially yeah. you, Drake. Especially we, you. We're right there. But I'm also a big... There's a little tension sometimes, but, you know... Just a little bit. We spat just a little bit. (laughs) But overall, it's a lot of love. It's a lot of love between us. And I'm also a fan of our guest today. He is what I love to call... This is an old word. A crooner. A vocal crooner. That just means you just make the song just... Ooh, you just, you just, you the the music just make you be like, ooh, yes, close your eyes. <laughs> he is an R and B sensation, neo soul rock star, Grammy nominated, BET award winner, and a DC native. Yes, he is. Welcome to the show, Raheem Devine. Woo, 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 we appreciate you Welcome. coming through. Thank, thank you guys so much for having me. No yes. problem. No problem. I'm so excited to have you here. Yeah, man. Suited and booted, looking, looking fresh, man. Hey, this is how know. we do it from the crib. I try to tell <laughs> y'all that's how right, we do man. it. You yeah. know, we, we gotta do it right. Y'all in the one percent projectile of you know success in <laughs> podcasting, man. I have you to, better, you better do the show. You know, yeah, you know, when you when you, when you early, you never late. That's it. Hey, that's, that's it. That's, that's gems already in already. the first couple minutes. And I love it that like this was not planned. We all in this family of gray today. Yeah. Yeah. Totally not planned. So that that tells y'all it's gonna be a good show. For sure, for Great sure. Energy. Nah, we appreciate you coming. Thank you. Um we ready to get into talks about love and relationship, but we got a little game for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready, Rhonda? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's get this thing going. Our game Game is real love or real lame. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a constellation prize or? Oh gosh, let's see. Mm. Bragging rights. There okay. we go. All right. Bragging fair. rights. Bragging right. 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 And the truth is, there's no real right or wrong answer. It just gives us some insight into how you think about these scenarios. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you ready? Ready, set, <laughs> go. Go. Okay. After a couple of dates, the person asks for your autograph. Is that real love or real lame? Mm. Mm. Is she is the person <laughs> is she is she asking for someone or for her is she asking for like a loved one, a friend, or she's asking for herself. Mm. Oh, that's that's I'm mean, we got to go with Lane. That's Lane. That's Lane. Okay. Why is yeah. that Lane? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would just be different if we kind of met in a setting where, where I was working. Mm-hmm. Um I'm signing, she asked for an autograph and I'm signing it, mm-hmm. and, but there's some type of chemistry beyond the fanship. You know, Got for it. me, that's a thin line with that. Dating fans and messing yeah, been with been there, fans. done that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, can get, you know. It you, can get you tricky. Yeah, you don't know what somebody's mental health is. Okay. <laughs> they, don't know, they don't know what mine is. <laughs> that could be a lot. You know what I mean? Got so, it. Um, and at the, at, I think at the end of the day, it's a it's a catch twenty two because you want yeah. you want your significant other or your partner, um, you know, for those that are married, I would imagine you want your your wife or your husband to be your biggest fan and supporter. Yeah, sure, right. But you also want to be with someone who's who wants to be with you for you and not not because of that. Yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, for you know, for the perks of what comes with being with mm-hmm. you, or you know. I, everybody wants you until they understand, until they have to see like what all of you all of you For and sure. what comes with you you know the good bad and indifferent you know yeah no, I, I agree with you I think it's real lame I do too because I think to me, autographs and pictures and stuff like that is for people who feel like it's a once in a lifetime moment. Like they just met you. I don't know if I'm gonna get this again. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're but not you gonna have me. that access again. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you with me right y'all now. Y'all been vibing. Y'all been kicking it. Yeah. You like, like can you sign this piece of paper for me? Just that in makes case. me seem like you trying to do something. <laughs> like you trying. I don't know. You're trying to do something with that. Yeah. And to mm. your point about you wanting your partner to be like your biggest fan, in my mind, it's like you want your partner to be your cheerleader and not necessarily your fan. Because when you think about a cheerleader in a football team or a basketball team, 
they are like a part of the team. The cheerleaders are like a part of the team. The fans are in the stands. They have absolutely really no no access. I, I, absolutely. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, I guess the acronym for fan is fanatic. And then fanatic yeah. can get, you know what I mean? It can so get it wild. Can get tricky, it can you know? get tricky. Um, yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Lame. Like, lame. You just you said, speaking <laughs> from experience. You just, you just had your first intimate nah. moment. And it's like, can you sign my T-shirt? Hey, can you sign my T-shirt before? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. While out on a date, they call their best friend in front of you to say that they found the one. Real love or real lame? Real love. I, I think it depends on, you know, I, I need the details. <laughs> right. Like, is this the first date? No. Or this... Like, you've you been, you been, been dating. dating. They've been, y'all oh, been vibing. I, yeah, I mean, clearly that, that's a real love moment for them. It, yeah. it, it really depends, you know, now where you may be in the, in that space, mm -hmm. you know, is a different thing. But, yeah, that's a real, that's, that's a real love moment, you know? I like that. I feel that. I that's, think it's cute. Yeah. yeah. I feel like. As long as it's the first time I'm hearing it ain't from, like, I'm pretty sure if we had this relationship, you probably done told me that at some point. So if you say it in front of your friend, then that's cool. But, like, I don't know. I, I feel, feel like, like it could be lame if it's done too soon or if it feels like you're just showing off because I don't like a show off. Or it's, or, or or kind of being set up. Yeah. It's yeah. like you're trying to hype it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. All right. Last one. After a breakup, your ex decides to write a book sharing the details of the relationship and they say this is a part of their healing process real love or real lame i think that that is as lame as <laughs> um <laughs> trying to find a comparison of, I, like me personally i i just have a thing and maybe I, I now if you're married that's one thing but if you guys are married i don't think that you should be plastering every moment of who you're with and Mm -hmm. just with all these things because here's the thing once the breakup happens mm -hmm. yeah you know or you show too much I, i'm one of those i'm one of those i'm i believe you should protect what you love okay mm. because people you one neither one of your exes are rooting for y'all <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and just you know people tend to what want what they can't have you know, um, you can have you can have your it could be your 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 friend from the sandbox that can be you know envious of you the entire time. Mm -hmm, you know, people mm -hmm. have went through. I'm sure people have experienced that. Sure, one form or another. You know, so yeah, I just you know definitely real yeah. lame. <laughs> well, will she come back and say, "Well, I heard that song and it sounded like that song was about me though." So I can I give my expression artistically, if, mm -hmm. but you can give yours. Yeah, I mean, you can think it's about you, but that don't mean <laughs> it's about you. You know, that, very that's, true. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of. You know, that would be. I mean, I think that's I think, part of it, though. Like you're saying, it's like if you are doing it in a way to where nobody can truly be like. It's, ah, him. it's him or it's her, then maybe that's a little different. But if you're making it to the point to where it's like people know it's me or you making it obvious it's me, then that's probably like the difference. I, I, I always say, you, you know, you really find out how loyal somebody is to you when you're not. That's it. When, that's when you really find yeah. it. Yeah. Like with when matters of the heart, out. you know, people come together, fall in love, divorce, separate. Some people remain friends. Some people never speak again. Mm -hmm. Right. But, um, I believe in an unspoken loyalty that should mm. exist that, you know, um, and that's whether, you know, that's whether or not it's in dealing with a previous partner, um, your co-parenting as a parent, mm -hmm. yeah. where you may be in two separate households. I feel like you should never, you should always take the high road. Never throw your, never throw your baby father, never throw your baby mother, mm -hmm. the child of your, <laughs> you know, uh, the, your partner that you lay down and make that beautiful child with, right. like don't throw them under the bus. Like some things just ain't for the, they, the it's public. not for the street. It's not yeah. for the public. Yeah. It's integrity. That's yeah. what you're talking about. It's, especially if you're trying to heal. If you're trying to heal, go get therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And you can open and pour your heart out in that arena Absolutely. instead of like to make means, especially if you weren't 
already like a writer. Like if you weren't a if you weren't an author, all of a sudden you date a person of a certain stature, and now you want to write. It's a, a book. come up, you know. Yeah. Ever, anything other than that, you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a uh, what they it call it clout chase. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, I got a piggyback question on that now because we had talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if something happens in public, you have to address it in public? Like, let's say there was infidelity or something went wrong. Do you feel like you have to then address it in public or you should still try to keep that private? It depends on what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people, you know, in our world, they say if they're talking about you, then that's a good thing. Mm. No, you know, matter. no matter what the conversation uh, yeah, is. Yeah, no matter what the conversation is. I disagree with that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, your name is the most valuable thing you have next to your reputation. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it really, it really, it really depends. We just we live in an we live in an era though that in a time that people don't care that everything is on everything is mm -hmm. in your face and nothing is no moment is private no moment yeah. is, you know bad enough that if it's something that's publicized that you already kind of like embarrassed your partner yeah that's the worst you know embarrassing you, 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 get, you get what I'm saying yeah. so to further embarrass them. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just don't, I, I, me personally, I don't see the point in it. But, 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 but again, it, you know, it depends on who you are. If you, if you, you know, if you're a preacher of a mega church, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, um, it becomes what was, hard. What was a pastor back in the day? Was a pastor back in the day? I can't, I can't remember. He, he has some info. Look, I'm scared to start saying names. He, he There's some, been he a has, few. He has some infidelity. He, he had some, inf he, he had <laughs> some infidelity. He had. A, he had. A, he, he went like public and did a whole press conference. <laughs> <laughs> CBS, NBC. Everybody was there. Yeah, mm. everybody was there. I feel like the latest one similar to this is like the whole Kiki Palmer situation, which I feel mm. like is like plaster everywhere. Bad move on his part. Bad move on he his part. He should have had that conversation privately. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was telling, but I was like, yo, that's a regular relationship thing, you know, that people go through that conversation, but for it to be then you to make it and put it in that arena, that's yeah. where you messed up at. Yeah. And it seems like Kiki is not, is the person that you don't want to do that with. Cause she, <laughs> <laughs> she literally was just in, 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 in she's in Usher's new video. video so. Yeah. She's like, you know oh, okay, I mean? we want to do it in public. what they say? Stay petty. <laughs> you ain't got to yeah, get petty. She, she big, are they still together? Like, does anybody I know? I think that's a mystery. It's kind of like know. a, it's a mystery. We don't know. I don't, I feel like some people have been saying like, it's now they feel like the whole thing is a rollout. I disagree. I just feel like now you're striking while the iron is hot. This has happened. This is probably the most viral Kiki has been in a while in a long time if if not ever and it's like well I'm gonna ride the wave while I got the wave and I I feel a little indifferent about how it's fully playing out like some part of me is like well you shouldn't have jumped out there Mr. Sir but another part of me is like but this is a real relationship yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, when yeah. the petty outside in the world it has to stop because now it's ble it could potentially bleed into your household where the rest of us aren't there and you have a child together. So even if they aren't fully together anymore, it feels like it might be causing too much tension at this point. Yeah, for him, for the for it to be the if, 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 for it, for the plot twist for it to be the uh, rollout would be <laughs> would be nice. Be, I would be ingenious, <laughs> <laughs> but he'd have to have he he he'd really have to have some tough skin. Yeah, yeah, and and because yeah, like I mean, it was already in question for other reasons. You yeah, know what I mean? so it's, it's kind of like it's yeah, he should have he should have had that he should have had that conversation. At home. At home. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, that's a lesson. Like, once you take an action, you don't know what the consequences of those actions are going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think he's suffering the consequences. I think he's a little hurt, probably. A lot hurt. But it really, <laughs> but, but, but what it really comes down to is like insecurities. You know yeah. Because I mean? me personally, I want I want you to be the baddest. Yeah. Would you care? Nah, that? nah. Nah. I'm, I'm cool. Like, like cheeks out. That's that's I'm me. Cool. I mean, hey, yeah, hey, like I'm, I'm cool. And then you understand the environment and the situation and where she's at too. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you, everything you got to take into context when you making a decision. You know, she going, she gonna, she's gonna have. I'm sure, I'm sure there's an artist or someone who he's a super fan of that. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? very true. 
He might show a little, you know, a little something, something, a little taco <laughs> a little, meat, a little, a little taco meat, right? <laughs> you know, maybe maybe a little, you know, male nipple here, here, here there, you know, you know. <laughs> I love that, love that so oh, much. Well, no, thank you for playing our game. Absolutely, I think you did well. One, I thought yes, I, 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 right I agree. Sure. I I actually agree with all of your answers, for sure. every single one. And the context behind it. So now it's time to go all the way back. I want to start in the beginning. Um, And this is normally the first question I ask people when we talk to them is, what was your parents' like marital status and what was the greatest lesson about love that you learned from your parents, whether good or bad? Mm. Um, I've learned, you know, me being a parent, um, what I learned from my mother and father's situation is that I learned the importance of co-parenting. Mm. kind of the move in the opposite of what I was in the middle of and what I experienced, you know, mm. you know what I mean? And um, because matters of the heart between the parents can, that could spill over into, yeah. you know, your upbringing. And I've been in therapy for the first time in my life for like going on a year now. That's awesome. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and I've been to more sessions than less, you know. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes I try to do, I, I try to dodge try to get out of them a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what I mean. But it, but it's about accountability. Like sometimes I just don't want to go because I think that you know it's it requires you and forces you to um, willingly hold yourself accountable yeah. mm. to the things that you want to change or mm-hmm. the trauma that you experience and things like that. So sometimes it you know it's um, you have to reopen certain wounds to make sure that they close properly. Mm. So, that's you know good. What I mean? That's so uh, good. But yeah, just I, I would say like the importance of uh of co parenting, you know, not not throwing your, you know, your kid's mother, the mother of your child under the under the bus. Mm-hmm. Um having knowing which battles to fight. You know, and again, I'm this this is if you're not, you know, if it's you guys aren't together and deciding to, you know, to move on and obviously still have to co-parent like just the importance of it it's like it's so it's so important you know it spills over into the man you become the lover you become Mm -hmm. the father you become yeah you know uh or lack of yeah was was there a like a family relationship that you saw that you really admired since it doesn't it doesn't sound like your parents were fully together they co-parented for most of the time um, and not that that was it's a bad thing. It just might have had its ups and downs. Was there like a relationship in your family or just someone you were around where you were like, I love that the way that love looks or the way that that feels it's something that you might have aspired to have? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I would I, I, I would I would be completely transparent. I would have to say that, yeah, it would be, you know, maybe like a friend, neighborhood friend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where I would see, you know, uh, and say, wow, I wish I had that yeah. father. That I, I wish I had that father son relationship, mm-hmm. you know, with my dad, and in, in the where maybe you know my dad was in a whole other state, got mm. it, got you, yes, my sir. entire life, mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. So you know, I wish I had my dad in my household. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, but although he wasn't in my household, he was in my life. He made it, you know, he he attempted to be, he made the attempts that he could make, you know, yeah. via court and just the other things that. Some women do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know. So yeah. So absolutely, I think that that I would just say would be vicariously through them. Yeah, through people around me. Or Mm -hmm. man, I wish I had that mother son relationship. That that like that's they're like best friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about television? Because I know a lot of people say if they didn't see that in their house, they looked at some relationships that they saw on TV. So I mean, I think for everybody, it was the Cosby Show Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it was shows (laughs) like the Cosby Show, A Different World, Mm -hmm. um, What's Happening. Mm. Wow, what's happening? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was a good one. Dino Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the good times. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah good good times. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely good times. Absolutely sure. good times. Because that was, you know, through through any adversity. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, and it and it and it and 
that was before my time, technically. Same, you know what I mean? but I definitely yeah. rewatched that. But but but, could, yeah. but but I could relate to that mm-hmm. um, because when I did, you know, I typically spent summers with my dad, and um, and you know, in the rest of the year in the DMV area, Maryland, Montgomery County. I grew up mm-hmm. in Montgomery County, mm-hmm. um, and graduated from High Point, you know, in Beltsville. Yeah. But I would spend summers, and there was a period of time where where my dad stepped up and. And took me, you know, um, at a crucial time in my life. Nice. Um, and his as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, it, look, looking, 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 looking back on it, yeah, th- those, those would be the shows, you know? Yeah. That, um, that, you know, we, that I look to, and I think a lot of us look to. Yeah, that's so interesting to me. Yeah. Because it's like, we, we've talked to a lot of different people, and it's crazy how, a lot of our stories are similar when it comes to like parenting. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I had a co-parenting situation. Luckily my mom and dad, they were divorced ever since I could remember, Mm -hmm. but luckily they were on the same page to where like they put me first and I was able to see healthy Mm co-parenting and it changed my mindset on what that would ultimately look like. Um, But then I got a stepfather too, who came in the picture later and being able to see my mom in the house with a man and seeing how a man operates in a household, like changed my whole perspective on love and how to act or how to treat a woman. Um, especially when I met my wife. So it was like a huge influence, but I know Rhonda has the same co-parenting like experience, mm-hmm. but her experience is a lot different. Too. Very different. Yeah. yeah. So I think mine was, is probably more similar to yours, mm-hmm. except I would say my parents co-parented, quietly so there were rumblings there were certainly things going on Mm -hmm. that I didn't learn about until I was an adult which I'm thankful for that so my mother certainly just wasn't a fan of like the fact that my dad decided to go in and out whenever he wanted to sometimes he was out of state sometimes he was up the street just choosing not to participate um but my mom was very quiet about it she never talked about him to me Mm -hmm. you know I never even I can't even remember a time hearing my mom you know that you downstairs or you in the next room and you hear her like that yeah. goddamn piece of that. <laughs> yeah. I never even heard that. You know, I my, envy you. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mom was really quiet about it. And another thing she was super intentional about, even when I couldn't have him, she wanted to make sure I knew where I came from. So I spent yeah. a lot of time with my father's family, yeah. like my grandmother, my aunt. Um, so I didn't get to see a lot of that healthy love in the household though you know my mom remarried which that was a nightmare um but I didn't get to see a lot of it but my father was very loving when I did get to spend time with him he was very affectionate he was very braggy like what I was talking about in the game where he just wanted to tell everybody this is my daughter this is my daughter this is my only daughter and I'm like this is also the only daughter you don't really take care of but okay you know so but I and, and I have and I have to say like not to villainize either one of them. At sure. the end of the day, they operated the best they could. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that. You know, there's an understanding that comes with that too. Like my mom, I could count on one hand how many men I've ever seen her around. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Like there was. I know there's. Cer- I know there's certain sacrifices that she made for sure. Um, for me, you yeah. know what I mean. Um, you know, there was a there was a level of respect that she had not only for her child for me, but. Yeah. For herself, mm-hmm. that wouldn't allow her to, for it to be a revolving door, mm-hmm. you know, in this single parent household. Um, so that's ultimately probably one of the biggest sacrifices. Looking back on, I wish my mom had hey, had uh, had, had yeah. um, a husband or companionship. Yeah, you know that can make that can make that can make anybody bitter. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It can make you bitter in a lot of ways. It can make you. It can make you make you bitter and resentful. Um, for 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 the person you're co-parenting with, mm-hmm. it didn't work out. Yep, it's not supposed to be like this. It can make you bitter towards your child. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, but again, you know, you 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 deal with the hand that you're dealt, and ultimately the goal is to not repeat the cycle and kind of break those yeah. generational curses. Yes, you know. Yeah. Even if I'm not married at 48 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, go, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. I was saying one thing that I didn't hear you say that I always hear a lot of people say when it talks about co-parenting is, and the struggles is be careful who you have kids with. Oh, no, that that's that's a 
That's number one. That's, that's, you know that's you know, always understood. You know what it, you know understood. What it is? I, I feel like that's a common sense thing, but we gotcha. know that common sense is a common. That's right. And and and, mm-hmm. and and I would definitely be the first person to say like, yeah, and it works both ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me, it's like, you know, with 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 the, with the mothers of my children is that they knew what I did before I, what my lifestyle was like. Mm-hmm. Before I, you know, before before we lay down to make our beautiful sons, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I knew what their lifestyle was like. For you sure. Know? Um, but yeah, it's it's it 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 it's very important. Very very important. Like yeah. Very important. Like I don't regret For any, sure. any any of my children. But if I had to do over again, I wouldn't have had children with multiple women though. Yeah. Huh? So how many? Because that's because that it's 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 a it then becomes a challenge for the kids and like mm-hmm. dividing the time and yeah. making sure they see they sip make, making sure they see their siblings and yeah. you know their brothers and their sisters and you know what I mean like mm. but I didn't have anybody just to 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 like be like hey really ha- yeah I didn't yeah. have those discussions with my parents about blueprint like, like sex or hey this is how you move or. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't, ju- I, I wasn't one of those, you know, it's not a cliche story where I jumped off the porch early and yeah. was in the streets and this, that, and the third. So I didn't have any, I didn't have like OGs or, mm. necessar- or, or necessarily a neighborhood mentor to say, hey, when you get to moving around, this is how you move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for me, it's always been about, um, the experience and the trial and error of of, of of the natural trial and error and progression of like life. Yeah. You know? And mm-hmm. manhood kind of figuring your way out through it. So speaking of like not jumping off the porch as the love King, I'm sure before that you were the love Prince. When can you <laughs> when, like talk about kind of when you <laughs> actually, actually, actually before, before the love King, I was actually uh, the R and B hippie. Okay. Neo soul mm-hmm. rock star. Okay. These days is the love King of soul and R and B. Yeah. Um, the love, the the love king moniker kind of started around twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Okay. This okay. is just as like a self reinvention. Mm-hmm. At the time, I had um, it was a branding thing as well. I started a foundation, the Love Life Foundation. Okay. And um, doing a lot of community work. So, so and, and, and then of course, you know, um, on occasion I do concerts and. Women throw unmentionables. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get you one of them big old ones like Drake just got. <laughs> that was hilarious. Drake has nothing on me when it comes to <laughs> when that. It comes to that. <laughs> when it comes to that. There's a storage room full of unmentionables. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. On a crown on a crown chair. <laughs> but on a on a on a on a on a uh, you know, on a serious note, um yeah, it, it's did you start kind of your endeavors into love young? Like, do you remember? Was it middle school, high school? Like, I've were always you... been, I've always been a, a lover. I, I love women and a love. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say I don't, I don't know. Ladies' man is the right term, mm-hmm. but just um, you say you're a romantic. What, uh, what, <laughs> just a just a, a protector of like. Women like on yeah, the schoolyard and mm-hmm. you know um, some of my early experiences to you know sex and intimacy weren't what they necessarily they should've, maybe should have been, been. Mm-hmm. okay you know what I mean mm-hmm. so um, yeah it, it you know finding out through therapy you find out a lot about yourself they kind of like you know it kind of goes but it goes it goes it goes hand in hand I think I think um, Musically, it's a conscious decision, though, that I've always made from day one. That, that you were I, gonna sing about that. I wanted that that you know you never you you'll never hear me on the record being the guy. Can you curse on the show? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. You so you so you never hear me on a you you never I'm never gonna be the guy on the record that you're gonna hear call a woman a bitch on the record. Yeah. Right. And we love that. You know mm-hmm. or what you you know what you know what I mean like um, can I listen to certain records and mm-hmm. and appreciate it and. Um, you know, understand that it's entertainment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, do I am I, am I a lover of hip hop? 
absolutely all genres as well but Mm -hmm. just me personally like i feel like it's enough of that out there tearing women down you know tearing men down as well yeah Mm -hmm. miss i I feel like we are misrepresented on record you know like they they used to say back in the day on wax Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. right where there's enough misrepresentation misrepresentations of us digitally out there very true like the footprint the fingerprint is out there already. Yeah. So, you know, it's always been my conscious decision to make records that make women feel beautiful, that make people want to fall in love. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to be in love to 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 be able to make something that people want to make love to or fall in love to. Yeah. Had a first dance, conceived their first child, first prom date. You know, music is a uh, is an experience. It's a soundtrack to to, to life, life and moments yeah. that For are sure. unforgettable. You know what I mean? Yes. So, um, and at and at the end of the day, that's my that's my gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I feel like I'm using my gift at mas- maximum capacity. You know, um, when I'm in love, king mode. You know, yeah, I love that because <clears throat> I think that applies to like you said, all art forms, like our representation out there isn't always positive and you're right about that like even when i look at even tv let's say reality shows like somehow some of those are portrayed but then i remember growing up watching like run's house and that was like such a positive it was like Mm -hmm. great because it was just different and i think that's what you're talking about like in the world of negativity your music is just something more positive more you know uplifting love and the great things about relationships i think people misconstrue it because they they forget like it's my job though too yeah mm. i'm just happy to be blessed and be uh, to to do something that i really enjoy doing yeah. i'm in love with doing like i i love my job it like, shows you know what i mean so yeah. um but it's my job for sure you know what i mean so you know i think that you know it's, it can be a challenge like dating and, you know, yeah, relationship wise, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because yeah. it, it kind of sets the expectation of the bar so high. Mm. Yeah. It can, it can set the bar so high sometimes. Um, and, um, yeah. I, I, something about that, something about that smile tells me that there's like, there's a thing there where it's like, this is my job, right? Like I'm not only do I do it for a living to make money. That's what we think about. When we think of a job, mm-hmm. but I'm also very good at it. Yeah. And it does not necessarily always align with where I want to be in life, right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, or 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 I'm I'm you know I I can be I can be in a space where I'm trying to figure out where I want to be. Yeah. Mm, Just because I'm singing about it super clearly it, doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it that that's that's where I'm at in my life at that at that at that very moment. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know that. The record that I wrote last night is based is based on the woman I'm dating right yeah, now. Yeah, right. You know what right. I mean? Like, you know, um, as a creative, I'm able to pull from different from different spaces, mm-hmm. from my mm-hmm. personal space, um, vicariously. From you know, I could be it could be a net a net a Netflix and chill moment. Yeah, yeah. it could be it it'll, it'll be something that be, that'll be said during this conversation that'll you know. Spark something in your spark mind. Spark an idea, and it's yeah. like I gotta get to the studio, or okay, mental note. Gotta gotta drop that. Yeah, yeah. yeah a I week feel- later is you know it's it, it's a record, it's a song, you know, mm-hmm. it's, or or it's an entire uh, body of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel like today probably finding inspiration is a little harder. We talked a little bit about like off camera about like how things have changed a lot in music and everything is so kind of fast and it's all about a trend and it's all about. It's actually easier for me. Easy. Okay. Like I'm in it. Like I feel like I'm, I've carved out this lane. Mm -hmm. If it's broke, why try to fix it? I'm still, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting better at what I do. Yeah. I mean that humbly. And um, you know, I can listen. To, I can listen. To, it's been eighteen years since the Love Experience dropped. We, we we're on a twenty year countdown wow. to the Love Experience. My oldest son will be eighteen in less than a month. Wow! wow. And um, that's crazy. Yeah. So it's it's surreal. Mm-hmm. And I can listen to that project and hear the imperfections. Mm-hmm. I can hear the growth throughout. You yeah. Know, sure. the two decades of making music mm-hmm. and. I'm still challenging myself to be better at what I do, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know it's it's uh so for me it's easier. I, 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 but I've always been one of those one of those one of those people that you know when everybody goes left I go right. Got you. You know. Trendsetter. Yeah, a trendsetter, the blueprint, the yeah. architect. Like I, I've always kind of just been in been in that been in that mode and that mindset. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, nah, that takes courage to be able to do that. Cause sometimes you don't know what's down that oh, road. Oh no, you don't. You know? Yeah, it's a, it's it's but the biggest, it's the greatest leap of faith you can have. For sure, it's the mustard seed effect. Yeah, yeah. and I love that. I want to go back to something you said earlier because I thought it was really powerful, and I want to kind of like unpack that. Mm-hmm. You were talking about therapy, and now we learned a little bit more about like your upbringing and things that you experienced. But you said sometimes you have to reopen wounds mm-hmm. to then heal them. Mm-hmm. Like, talk a little bit about that, like that process of how something can heal, but I guess heal wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got to reopen that, really understand what's going on to, you know, heal well, what properly. Tr- well, what tr- well, well, what triggered it, um, you know, I'm just dealing with the one year anniversary of burying my dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, Condolences to you. Yeah, yeah, so losing my father put me in a space that I'd never had been in mentally before. Mm-hmm. Mentally, physically, spiritually. You know what I mean? Yeah. And still figuring that out on a day to day. How sure. that you know, how that works. I've had loss. Um, but the loss of a parent and the loss of a child is, you know, um, I don't think that's something I would wish on would wanna wish on my worst enemy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 in wanting to be, you know, uh, a better father, just myself, you know, and and, and holding myself accountable. In that space, you know, as it relates to my sons Mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, missing my dad and just kind of figuring out how to how to operate on a day to day moving forward. I just, you know, I I I put myself into some, you know, I I sought out therapy, Mm -hmm. you know, and. um, One of the first things that my therapist asked me, well, you know, like, why are you here? What are the things that you want to? What what are the things you want to work on? Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm here for basically four different reasons, you mm-hmm. know, and now we working through that. Yeah, you know, but you again, you have to. Um, it's just, it's just interesting when you do therapy and you realize how everything is like intertwined. Everything, yeah, yes. everything is intertwined. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, the relationship or the lack of relationship love lack of it that you feel might have you know with your mom your dad all those things are just it's all connected it's all intertwined Mm -hmm. how you were ultimately how you were raised what you were exposed to as a child molds and shapes you either consciously or subconsciously subconsciously yeah as an adult Mm -hmm. and then and then and then as you become uh, as you become you grow into adulthood and you become you know uh you learn what accountability is responsibility is you know um narcissism is Mm -hmm. you know uh you able to then you have to like unpack unload Open that wound. Open an open wound. Yeah. You, close, you know, because if you close, if you know, if you, if you don't close it properly, it's going to. It's going to keep coming it's back. Gonna keep, it's going to keep coming back, you know. Yeah. 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 So you, you, you have to learn how to deal and cope. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I'm in that, I'm in that, I'm in that space. But I wish I had done it earlier mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. My, my is so crazy that stories are so similar. My father's death push me to therapy as well but mm-hmm. many years later like I, my father passed when I was 23 mm-hmm. I didn't go to therapy until I was like 33 mm-hmm. around there mm-hmm. um, and I'm 39 now but that is what triggered it that's what sent me there so you know I go in the first session and I'm like I'm here to unpack my daddy issues right like this is what I need to deal with and the therapist was like okay you know I'm glad that we have a starting point in your mind but we gonna have to start before so let's that. Let's go down the rabbit. Let's hole. go down that hole. And <laughs> yeah. literally, what you're talking about, it's like, oh wow, oh wow. I mean, it was some sessions, and I understood what you said. Like sometimes you try to weasel out of them because 
therapy can be very heavy. I don't think, I think people use it now so much as a buzzword, like mental health. And I have a therapist. It's almost like having a, a Chanel bag now. So I have a therapist. We all love saying that. But you don't understand all the time how the process can be very weighty mm -hmm. because you think you're going in for one thing and then you're in there having certain conversations or being asked certain questions, being held accountable. And you didn't expect that. And I remember I was in a relationship. I would come home from some of my sessions and my ex would be like, so how was it? And I'm like, I just do not want to talk about it. Like, yeah. I just want to go to sleep because it's too much today. Like, it's yeah. a lot. But I'm so thankful because. I, you know, you get on the other side of certain things. And to me, that's the wound healing properly. When you can articulate or have certain conversations or you're not triggered by things so easily where you're just a wreck. There mm -hmm. were days where I could not talk about my father's death without falling apart. Mm -hmm. And that trigger of, yeah, we got to a good place, right? Me and him got to a good place before he passed away. Mm -hmm. But there were wounds that were not closed properly. Like that's so profound. I'm gonna, that's going to stick with me like forever. You saying that, um, but therapy allowed me to close them properly. So now when I talk about him, it is of love and of reverence, even with our difficulties, even mm -hmm. with our, our challenges. Um, so you talk a lot about being a dad. You talk about that and you have, are you have all boys? Yeah. I have four boys. Four oh, wow. boys. Okay. And, and how many moms? Four moms. Four moms. Yeah. Okay, so you are so like one. one wait a minute. No, no. <laughs> you got to count yeah. them down. Listen, my dad had eight children, so yeah. I get it. About six moms. Um, but you you are the again the love king. But co-parenting with four different women. Do you feel like you're the co-parenting king? And do you feel like there's any advice you can give to any any anybody, but specifically to men who might be trying to figure it all out? I'm a work in progress constantly. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? It's it's a, you never stop being a parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? For 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 my oldest, he's about to turn eighteen. So mm -hmm. my 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 focus and goal with him is to be is to is to be one of his best friends at this point. Yeah. You know How old you? were you when you had him? Man, I was 30, 30, 30, 32, 32. 30, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 30, yeah, it was in my thirties. I mean, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So that wasn't that wasn't too young. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was in my thirties when yeah, when Ramir okay. was conceived. Yeah. Okay. Got you. But um, you know, as you it's different phases of parenting, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And um so like I said, for him, it's 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 being his best friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being one of his best friends. Yeah. For the rest of his life. For yeah. the rest of my life. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully we'd be blessed both to have a long time to do that. You know, yeah. you know, for my youngest, it's being more present and being as present I can be mm -hmm. at this stage and, you know, where in my life and my career and, you know, because um, that can be the gift and the curse. You know what I mean? For sure. When you're the breadwinner and having to move around and navigate and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and, and do, you know, do all the things. So a lot of people, um, like, depend on me and count on me. Yeah, for sure. Know? But what I'm learning through therapy is the most important. Who's the most important person? You know, which is me. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, you can't I, be anything to anybody if you're not. Uh, yeah, I, to I, you know, I, sure. I, I've been telling people for you know, I'm in a space where I'm. I've learned to be comp very exceptionally selfish mm -hmm. with um, with my with my life and my time, mm -hmm. like for my for my happiness though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know and. I'm a firm believer that you know self uh, happiness requires selfishness, mm -hmm. like unapologetically though. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. You know what I mean. So if you have to communicate with certain people um, via text versus getting on the phone or having a face to face conversation to control the energy, mm -hmm. and, and and then choose and pick what you respond to and not respond to. Yeah. To protect that happiness. To protect mm -hmm. your happiness and your sanity. Stay on course to be able to do all the other things that you need to do. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I feel like I've mastered that. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> are all your kids here or are they? Um, one of my sons lives in Houston, but the rest of them are local. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Got gotcha. you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you talked about being 48 and unmarried. Yeah. 
What's dating like for you today? Is it is it easier at, at your age, more mature? You, like you make music much easier. You are uh, co-parenting a lot easier. You're still learning through the process because like you said, every day you're a parent. So what is it like today when it comes to dating? And I got to piggyback on that too. <laughs> yeah, da- 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 dating is cool. Um, you know, I think since my last, my, I, think, I, I think since my last relationship that yeah. I was in, um, that I've that I I purposely have been dodging commitment. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's some other things that I put at the forefront mm-hmm. before that. Mm-hmm. Especially now being in therapy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's about figuring out what what I want and ideally what is going to work for me. For yeah. yeah. You know, um in order for it to work for us. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Um I was I was I was I was one of those relationships that didn't su- survive the pandemic. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. got you. So it it was, was a make or break thing, yeah, right? I had some. I, I was in a heavy situation, and it didn't. You know, we didn't. We we, we went separate ways. Were too. y'all living together during that time? Absolutely. Uh, got you. Yeah. yeah, that's when. Absolutely, I can imagine that being hard, especially for you. And where I, I, yeah, and I and I and you know there was a period where I was very public about the fact that I was in a relationship. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Um, protecting the thing you know what i love but um yeah i haven't really it's the first time i've kind of really been spoken about it yeah you know but it there was a lot of challenges you know what i mean yeah. like there were a lot of challenges um the blending of the families mm. mm-hmm. having children yeah um just a lot a lot a lot, a lot of, it's a lot of challenges um and there's a lot you got to take into account that when you are a parent and you have children and you date somebody that has children mm-hmm. and then, you know, your lifestyle versus their lifestyle, it's a, sure. lot, it's a, it's a lot. Sometimes we can be very selfish mm-hmm. with what we think we want mm-hmm. when it comes to matters of, the, matters of the heart that we are oblivious to everything else around us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And literally you 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 know you're destroying things yeah. around you burn you're burning the house down mm. yeah and what you think in the name of love <laughs> that's a song that's a song y'all <laughs> <laughs> don't burn the house down in the name of love for sure for sure <laughs> now i always wondered too like being in entertainment like does that have your mind kind of jaded when it comes to like commitment and relationships because I've talked to people because they like yo I got married women who like absolutely coming up to you know, me you know like what it is yeah a man in my position um being single for so long and but really just a man in my position it's I've had access and been exposed and to been so able to much see to yeah be, like too much and so much <laughs> I've been able to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's like it's like getting a peep behind a, the bell or the curtain yeah, yeah. And you, you know what i mean and it's like oh oh okay Ooh. oh wow <laughs> women cheat too mm. <laughs> yes yes they do a lot better at it a lot you, of times you know, too oh, like oh married women cheat too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh like yeah yeah or or oh it's an even playing field out here mm-hmm. yeah. you've been out here playing in their face so much that now they want to play, play back. back. It's a, yeah, they playing back, and they play, <laughs> and they playing, they playing rough, good, good, <laughs> real they good. Playing, they playing good, good, for they sure, real good, real bad. <laughs> they acting bad, the real kind. <laughs> that make you. It probably make it hard to trust folk. I mean, yeah, I mean, and 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 then for me, you know, I got trust issues anyway mm. from just childhood. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So. Yeah, so you know, a combination of, of those things, um, yeah, it, it it'll make you it'll make you uh, think twice, or but then but and then and then and then ultimately, like you know, you you want to slow walk it so that you don't go through the same things again, repeat don't the wanna, cycle, yeah. something mm-hmm. I just went through, mm-hmm. you know, three years mm-hmm. of. I guess I, I mean, I don't want to say wasted time, but no, it's all a lesson. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's it's, it's sure. all a lesson. But time is the most valuable thing we have. Yes. Yeah, yes. 
And mm-hmm. it's hard to see it as a lesson when you felt like, because I feel like I know for me, sometimes we've been in relationships. I've been in relationships where I stayed too long. Like the writing was on the wall a year before or two years before. And I was like, okay, well maybe, well maybe we just needed to be in a different dynamic. A, a good, a good friend of mine, Wes Felton, artist, mm-hmm. friend of mine. I remember he said something that was profound. He said, a lot of people are out here in long term breakups. Yeah, mm. they're yep. operating in like long term breakups. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. you, so you you know you go home every day, or you you, you know you with this person um, that you really not you know you're not happy with, or you or you didn't take enough time to really take you, your time. You know, stu- is that it? Study study that, them, that, allow them yeah. to study you. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, yeah, that long term breakup situation say like they just suck. Cause, yeah. it's, Cause it's like you know you need to make that move, mm-hmm. and but. I feel like where that's where like the worst part of sometimes the trauma comes from, right? Like mm-hmm. not within the situation; it's the after the fact. It's where you now look at things and you're like, I don't know if I can trust that, or you you kind of date trying to do damage control through the whole dating process mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you stayed in something for so long that's it's reshaped your mindset, it's mm-hmm. reshaped your outlook. And I know, like, I'm not this way anymore, but I know at a point it was like, if that duck did quack like that and this duck even Mm -hmm. did a slight quack, I'm thinking that's exactly the same situation Mm -hmm. when it, one, it may not be. It could be, certainly, but it may not be. And I have to recognize that the accountability I have to have for myself is that I expose myself to too much pain. It Mm -hmm. wasn't just on him causing the pain necessarily, I knew that it was happening and I just stayed in it. I just sat there and now I'm going to, I can't penalize the new guy for something that I chose to kind of sit around. But in. Sure, people yeah. only do, people only do to you what you allow them to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now you experienced heartbreak, like major heartbreak. Of course. Absolutely. What was that like for you? Cause I feel like people probably see someone in your position is feel like, yo, you know, if he you the wanted, heartbreaker. He, like he the heartbreaker, I won't but get it's into like, the details. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll spare you guys the details. You know, you don't have to, we, we got, got some time. time. I'll spare you the details. <laughs> some time, uh, uh, but, I, but I, but I will say that, um, I've been in the, I, 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 I've been the guy in the bushes before. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I had my boy. Brian, you come on. I've had my I've had my wood, I've had my wood burning in the bush moment. <laughs> wow, <laughs> for so a you, lifetime. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've had yeah, I've had a burning in the bush moment. Yeah, and, I, and 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 um, yeah, I've had experienced heartbreak more than once. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I I went through a phase of where I felt like. The things I wanted, the, 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 uh, where I feel like the women I always wanted the most never wanted me back the way I wanted them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then I had to understand too that um, when it comes to dating and love and life, um, don't go for the woman that that you have to necessarily over o- overly pursue, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like. Um, it should be reciprocation when it comes to yeah. being like, yeah. I, and, 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 and I discovered about myself that I like to be pursued. Mm. What's like, that look like? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like to be like, meaning like, I like to know. That you want me to. That you want me to. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And women and, and, and women have a way of letting you know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like where it's effortlessly though. Right. And it's not like, overbearing mm-hmm. or feel smothering like a fanatic yeah, yeah it's almost like about. with like man i don't know if i'm ready for you yet maybe i'm still getting ready or, or maybe I, but i don't even know if i deserve you like mm. this is but this is but this feels good though like mm-hmm. this yeah. feels different mm-hmm. you know you know what i mean yeah it's it's um it's the difference between feeling needed versus wanted because mm. when people you know I, I want you to I want you to want me at the end of the day I don't want you to need me yeah because once you don't need me no more you just, just describe me yeah, yeah. you know I, there's so or many, vice versa you know yeah. for sure there's so many like you know dueling thoughts about that because you'll hear some people say like men need to feel needed 
But then you hit you hear from you where you're like, no, nah, I actually want to feel wanted. And I feel like two both things can be true depending on the person. But I'm with you. I would want to feel wanted because I feel like a need feels like you are depending on me like everything about your existence is wrapped up into my existence and if I have to make a move or and by make a move just if you're traveling for work or if I'm not at a hundred percent you somehow feel lost and confused in the world where if you're here because you want me you can see that as an opportunity to just pour into me to support me so when you say pursuing you it sounds like you're kind of talking about like those subtle things that show consideration to show like you know, I notice you. I see what's going on with you. That could be as simple as a phone call or a message. It could also be like, I'm going to make your favorite food because I know that's just what you need right now. Is that kind of like what you say when you mean like a woman who's pursuing you yeah, too? Yeah, it could be like, you know, I've I've had I've, date, I've had women who were like literally like girlfriends who who I who I'd say who I maybe asked to do I don't know I'm trying to think of a good mm -hmm. example um but it would some I guess it would be something typically that you would just ask of your partner mm -hmm. but, but, but because of who I am mm -hmm. they would be like no nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not your assistant mm. got it like hey can you grab some food for me I'm in the studio or yeah, something nah, like I'm that I'm not your assistant mm, wow Got you. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then, but then, but then, but then I've, 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 I've been, you know, had women in my life that will make me a five course meal at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or any time of the night or any time in the morning, get up and be like, Hey, you, are you hungry? You know what I mean? Yeah, that consideration, yeah, thoughtfulness. That, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. So you wouldn't think that they're without, doing without, that without, because without, you without, are? without ego or got mm -hmm. you. So Just that do, wouldn't be a flag for you to be like they're only doing this because of who I am. Like how you find that balance to where because people I mean, can go it, head it, over that, heels that, because then, of who you now are. that that's a whole nother discussion. It <laughs> always it kind of goes back to one of the questions I asked yeah, earlier. Yeah, dating a fan. If you're dating a fan. fan yeah. Mm -hmm. It always reveals itself at some point. And then you got to, like, you know, and then, you, and then, and then, and then, and then you got to ask the question, is this like, is this the woman that, that, um, I want to be my biggest fan? Mm -hmm. Or, damn, I've been dating a fan the whole time. Yeah. 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 Like, you know what I mean? But it always, you know, it always kind of reveals itself, you know? Hmm. But I had, I, you know, I've I've had previous um, girlfriends that told I didn't realize it till after I was out of it, and then like my family's now didn't telling me like these like different stories of like like why 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 I discovered you know towards the end of the relationship that she was she was never a fan of what I did you know mm. like, I don't, like I don't know if it was just like a it was a thing where where she knew I loved what I I love what I do so much mm -hmm. that I think there was a that she became envious or grew envious mm -hmm. where it was kind of like That's I bad. want you I want you to love me I want you to love me how you love, love that. your yeah. music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean or I want you to love me how, you know, how you love your dad. Mm. And because you don't, I've grown to hate those things. Mm. Ooh. You know you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. Like, especially the Love King thing mm. and that whole thing you do, that whole thing, I hate it. Yeah, I hate That's it. interesting. I, 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 you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a fan of it. I hate it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I despise it. Putting you two things against, putting those two things against each other. Yeah, you know what I mean. But that's interesting. Yeah, so so it, you know, and that and that that could be the, like you could. Oh yeah, the resentment, the envy, like all that could tear yeah, you know things what I mean? up. Yeah, and it works. You know, just it's it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a you know. It's a lot of women too, and you know, in defense of women, they 
sleep. They, you know, they're making more money than them, than, than 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 their partner in the household, or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And you sleeping next to the enemy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's very true. Whole time, he bad. He envious. <laughs> yeah. It's a, that's to me, that's one of the scariest things when the person that's like supposed to be the closest to you hates you the most, whether that's your partner, significant other, or even like sometimes, like you said, a close friend, your childhood friend, where they're just, they literally know where the berries are, the and bodies the are most, buried. And at the most vulnerable state mm-hmm. and wrong time, they let it fly. That's, that's horrible. And let, it, and let you know how they really feel. But that's people for you, right? You know what I'm saying? That's like, human nature. That's human yeah, behavior. It lets you know how you feel, you know? So it's like, you know, one of those things people say, like, when people show you who, who, they, who they are. You got to believe them. You got to believe them. No matter how much you, know how much, not, no, no matter how much you love them, no matter how good the sex is, the intimacy, you know, you hold people accountable based on actions. Yeah. For sure. Not. Not not the conversation, not the words. Now, I was reading a book and it said that humans are creatures of emotion and not logic. Like we have the ability to rationale, yeah. but like we're truly at the core emotional creatures. So even things that you feel like would make sense, like I had to learn in my marriage, like what fair was like fair isn't 50 50. It's going to be some 80 20. It's going to be some 70 30. It's, it's going to be some agree to disagree. Exactly. And you mm-hmm. just got kind of and it's and, leave and, it. and the whole structure of it is on compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Like because nobody's perfect. Exactly. So what do you what, what's, what's your do's? What's your don'ts? What's going to be your wills? What's going to be your wants? What um, what are your what are your desires? Where do you where do you lack? Self control, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, um, who are you to the core? Yeah, mm-hmm. peeling back those layers. Yeah, peeling back the layers. Mm-hmm. Like, who are you to the core? You know, and the hell with loving me at my best. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you handle me at my worst? Say that all the time. Love is not because of, but in spite of. Yeah. It's easy to love me because I'm yeah. Raheem Devon or I got these albums. And, but do you love me in spite of the things yeah. that I'm going yeah. through, in spite of the trauma that I have? That's when love really show up for sure. Yeah, that's why. I, that's probably, I mean, multiple reasons. But that's one of the reasons why I probably never, you know, done like reality TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean? Like at some point, you're going to see something or I'm going to show you something that's going to make you not... Yeah. You're gonna have an opinion. You mm-hmm. might not you might, might not, not love what you, you see. You might not love what you see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it may it may make you a little indifferent or it may make you mm-hmm. confused. You may get you you, you not, may not the you love may not, king. You may not <laughs> you may not be able to decipher <laughs> yeah. that, oh, that's his job. That's mm-hmm. right. That's Raheem. Not you know the love I mean? king. We these are yeah, yeah that's you know? a persona, yeah. and it, I think they are obviously intertwined because I don't think you can do what you do as good as you do it without having personal love experience, without having personal sex or intimacy experience. But there has to be sometimes a detachment of yeah. like I am before I was that, before I was a writer, before I was a, a performer. I, I'm a I'm a man, you know. I'm yeah. I'm a man. I'm a I'm a human. I have feelings. I have I have emotions. I think you know. For me, I think about. Um, I don't think I could date an entertainer, right? Why? Um, because I and it's me. It's really not. It's not them. I just don't know that I could fully it's handle you. it. It's not me. Yeah, like it's me, not you. Um, <laughs> what part of it is it? The access they have. Is I it think the... it is the and it, it made me think about the closest I came to that. Right, a few years ago, I dated a DJ. Okay. relatively popular but when we first started dating he was kind of just hitting his groove okay and um you know i was very happy for him super proud of him that's truly what he wanted to do he had mm-hmm. another job but that's truly what he wanted to do and i'm like yes go do your thing and i would never go to his gigs not because i didn't want to support him but because i knew how important it was for what he was doing for him to appear single right this this fantasy of the fans really for the dj because so many male djs they're they're that energy that fans are women i mean i've seen it i have guy dj friends who are like i you don't understand how much sex energy 
everything I get from controlling the crowd. The women that are coming like, can you play my favorite song? And da da da. So I was like, I don't want to be up in the booth with you kind of almost being this person where they're like, dog. yeah, almost. like, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a laid back type of person. Well, why not just go to the party with your girls and enjoy the party? Sometimes I did. Go see your boo. Boom. Some, say what's I up will real say. Quick. <laughs> Chuck the dude. Sometimes I did. Sometimes I did. But I think I probably couldn't handle all of the attention all of the time because I feel like sometimes people don't respect the fact that this is there's entertainment and then this is I'm like my person. Question. Okay, I'm ready. I love Uh-oh. a tough question. So, did, so, so, so you feel maybe in that moment. Mm-hmm. It was hard to handle the fact that like you had to go to this environment and be in this space where this person that you love or really care for a lot yeah is doing something he loves in that moment and in, and also in that moment you kind of like the least of his worries like you're not like you're not getting like you're not no attention no it's not the attention yeah i know what you mean it's not the attention it is the i guess the disregard that some people would have for his relationship or for his union you know like some people some fans really don't care yeah i mean yeah that just come with the territory right you know what i mean yes and i know that and i know that like that's not people always want what somebody else has yes yes yeah so that that's what i mean it's not because i would get the i got the attention Mm -hmm. i also don't need it in that environment Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. but it's the fact that some people just don't care like like you know dre's a handsome guy right we have gone places or done things and this he's married Mm -hmm. where like they don't care they will just launch themselves across the room yeah, like it's the waters sh- this just all the things and i feel like as a partner at a point i i don't ever want to be in a situation where i have to be like hey is calm. baltimore about to come back out so calm it's, down it's, it's, you're so, doing a lot right now like I, you can take the pictures you can be a fan you can do all those yeah. things but i feel like some people take it too so far for, so for this so for that reason yeah you're just like nah. yeah i feel like it's too much but it made me think about like have you experienced that like in dating where your partner is like this is a lot this is a lot because you specifically he just he's a not just absolutely a DJ. i think i yeah. went through it in my last relationship she just didn't know how to con- 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 um, communicate and convey it you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i think that and this is a recent um realization of my you know discovery of myself is that I remember, and, and, and me, 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 and my my oldest son, my um, my oldest son's mom. We 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 we've had some highs and lows, mm-hmm. but it's like one one of my best friends. You know, what I'm yeah. saying? We, we're going in that direction. Got gotcha. you. You know, okay. what I mean, we in a we in a new space, um, and I remember she used to often tell me like. Yo, you just live in this bubble, and I didn't realize it till 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 like you know, recently, almost mm-hmm. eighteen years later. <laughs> yeah, which what she was what she was trying to express to me, you know what I mean? Um, and I think because of the fact that like my son's about to turn eighteen, and we've had some great times, and but there's things that I've missed, or maybe not. I want to say I missed, but there's things that I wish. I had experienced mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or you look up and you just say, damn, where'd the time go? True. It's more of that. Mm-hmm. Got you. More of that than anything. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, where'd the time go? Like, damn, he's 18 already. Mm. <laughs> what did I miss? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I feel like I'm, I feel like I missed some stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, it, but it's just really just the concept of time and just realizing like, the value in it and how I don't have a con how you know I, I I look at the concept of it differently you know that's the bubble yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's part you know and being in the bubble you know mm-hmm. and um you know so and the bubble can be the gift and the curse you know what I mean yeah mm-hmm. and probably because you've been an entertainer for so long you can again you have such a great perspective of the detachment between you as a man and you as an entertainer mm-hmm. that Again, thinking about that dynamic, it's like you're like, man, that's just work. You know, the fans are gonna be the fans. The women gonna do whatever. Yeah. Where your partner is like, yeah, 
Like, well, how okay, do you, yeah. how do you protect like, your person like, from like, that? The partner's like, nah, you you don't understand. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I, you, you don't, you don't know the conversations that was in the restroom. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. You, you ain't when I was in the stall. You ain't, you don't, you didn't hear what they were saying. For sure. Right. How you protect your partner from and that? Who is, and who is Keisha? Because she seemed to like really know you. And she was on the guest list too. So who is she? For right. sure. <laughs> Sound like you got a little experience. A little Just experience a little bit. A little Just bit. a little bit. Just a little bit. But how do you protect your partner from that? Or can you? You can't protect anybody from the insecurities that they have in themselves. So. Like that's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, if you feed the insecurities, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, because you can take you can you can you can take a a totally confident, secure man, a woman, a partner, and break them down. Mm-hmm. They can be they can be like secure. They can be confident, and then they can get a text message or a DM or an email mm-hmm. with receipts mm-hmm. that you've been cheating for. The last six months, yeah, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you be, and, and 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 they had no idea, and they were in this comfortable. They were in this. Yep. They were good. They were they were good. Yeah, and now you done made them like you you done made them question everything about themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Lessons I've learned. Mm. You know what I mean. So yeah. you can open the door for insecurity, just like not being, just saying like. Who you are, or what you want from the gate, mm-hmm. or you don't know if you want to be in a monogamous relationship, or maybe you polyamorous, or mm-hmm. maybe you, or maybe that's something you exploring, yeah. or hey, I was raised this way, you know what I mean? Like I, my father wanted to have more than one wife. Like, mm-hmm. like that's just something I know. Just mm-hmm. that's I was kind of like kind of raised and groomed to from be in that, yeah. From mm-hmm. a young age, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so it just you know, it 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 you you can you can create the insecurities sometimes for sure. Yeah. Um, you got to, but you have to also pay attention to the triggers and the warning signs early when you in the when you in the dating stage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Say that sometimes again. we get so we get so we get so caught up. We get so right get, we get caught up in the cutty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we be getting the cutting <laughs> or the other perks of everything that comes Come with, with it. Yeah. yeah, like you you know what I mean? That mm-hmm. we don't see the, the big like warning signs, like warning mm-hmm. transition now Stop. now <laughs> abort mm-hmm. mission mm-hmm. Yeah. or she she you know or you just gotta just kind of be like stern in how you move you know to a point where a con- the conversation is just flat out had mm-hmm. or sometimes you gotta kind of reiterate hey remember remember I told you <laughs> that da 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 like mm-hmm. whoop de whoop whoop and wop 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 yeah. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> that you know, hasn't changed. That that hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. But this has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, what I mean, I and, and this is how I feel, and you know, um, so forth and so on. So, yeah, it's 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 um, you know, you got to be, and it's and it's really being honest with yourself too when it comes to like your own security and insecurities too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, as men. We can be the biggest, we can be the, we, we can be very, we can be big, big, big mad, big insecure mm-hmm. and be walking around like we not, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like those double standards are, 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 they real. are real. Very real. Sure. They're real. What would you say women misunderstand about men the most in your experience? Is it that, that men can be exceptionally insecure? I think... I, I think I think I think men oh, I think men should just just be take the approach of being brutally honest and just kind of laying it out, mm-hmm. whatever whatever it is, you know. And it's again, this is me speaking from trial and error. Whatever you need to disclose and it, from the gate, mm-hmm. say what it is. Say where you at in your life. 
whatever you feel like she needs to know, whatever you feel like you feel like your partner needs to know, right? And so that you give them the opportunity to make the decision. Yeah. Mm. Whether they want the end or they want to deal with it. Yeah. Or whatever. You know what I mean? You got some, I don't, you know, I don't, uh, you got some women out here to date married, married men. Mm-hmm. Like they target married men. Right. You have some men out here who date women while they're married. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And, but if they, if, <laughs> if he's letting her know that mm-hmm. and they, t- and they choose to create that, you know that stick of dynamite that eventually blows up in their face. <laughs> right, that part. You know, you, you know what I, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But to, um, but, but then you got men that'll be married, or a woman that'll be married. You got a woman that'll be married, right? Let's take the heat off the man for a minute. Take the take yeah, the. Yeah, take yeah, the I was like, I see, man. switch it up. Yeah, we going we, all right. <laughs> so you got because I, I I I've been in that position before. You know what I'm saying? I've been in that position before, like where I'm dating somebody and then I'm kind of trying to figure out like. The moves are kind of figure it out like the move like something ain't right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I and then I find out they got like a whole husband. Wow, crazy! How long into it? Man, you about to open up a wound? Right. <laughs> okay, sorry, you sorry, to, sorry. Oh, you about to open up a wound, girl? That, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to. Oh, <laughs> somebody called a paramedic. <laughs> nah, man, how long? It don't matter. Right? Yeah. No. I, but I see. I only ask that because sometimes if you find we, out early we on, meet you may meet not. And, Damn, you was all the way in. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't never had no interaction you make, with you make, with with nobody's spouse. What? Oh, spouse. nah, nah, not nah, nah, nah. close call. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> close call. Okay. Yeah, close call. Like, yeah. not you know, I'm just being candid. Not proud of it. Mm-hmm. You 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 know, everything is a. Uh, a learning Learn experience. A lesson, yeah, yeah, learning experience. I mean, my so 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 my thing is like you know, or 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 the, or the, hey, like I'm 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 in the middle of a divorce. Mm-hmm. We're separated. I've seen that before, and that's their narrative. But that but that ain't his version that's of what, the truth. That ain't his version. Yeah, he's very still. You feel very me? Much yeah. still married. Like yeah, mm-hmm. like so you know, <laughs> so you know, I got certain rules that I had to put certain rules in, in place. Per, yeah, yeah, in place for like mm-hmm. those type of things because you just don't want to even go down that. You don't even want to go down that rabbit hole, like you know. Yeah, most you know how many people in the cemetery, yeah, and in the penitentiary, mm-hmm. you know, over matters of the heart for yeah. sure. Yeah, male and female. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, it's enough single. And available. Available mm-hmm. <laughs> women, you know, and men out here, I would imagine, um, that, you know, you, you can don't have you to can, do you that. Can, you can just you can you can avoid that headache, you know. Yeah. Right? Nah, for sure. You said you had something on that that uh, what do women misunderstand about men the most? Oh yeah, I think that some I, I wanna and I wanna add go, go ahead. I just think women had to understand sometimes I think men are a lot softer than what men women give men credit for say it again you know what i'm saying we're a lot softer especially like once i got married like something i like being held i like we, being we like, actually we actually have emotions yeah like we have we have fi- <laughs> believe it or not we have feelings mm-hmm. you know what i mean so like you know when you ghost us well, we feel that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. when you you know when you don't when you you know when you tell us to use our word use our words but you don't communicate we feel that mm-hmm. you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. yeah like you know you you want to you 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 give what you want to receive yeah. for sure mm-hmm. you you know what i mean i yeah. think that it's that stereotypical a man is supposed to be this a man is supposed to be that yes that all of these things that are bravado machismo like yeah and that that certain things get like yo men like to be taken out on dates trips all that <laughs> for sure yeah we trying to have a uh 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 i don't want to say hot guy summer <laughs> a hot guy summer yeah not definitely not that i don't know how i feel about that but <laughs> yeah but yeah it, the, the the reciprocity you know what i'm saying like it's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's um it's important it's, it's it's important you know and you know we live in an era of 
being fuck ninja free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That cute song, but you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. you know, we we do we we want to dispel the you know we got to dispel the myth the myth that we don't need each other. Like we actually yes. need each other for sure. For sh- oh my gosh, yes, like drives me crazy. I'm like I've really. That's why I love your music. This is why I'm an R&B girl, as I was saying off camera, because that and, and today being single, that is what always loops me back into no matter what's happening with the cute songs, with the we don't need each other, with the I'm a city girl. And it gets no shade to JT and Carisha because I love them. I love them as entertainers. But we really do need each other. Right. Like love is to me, it's what makes the world go round and having that in a true, pure way that supersedes all things is like any time I've been in love, it's, it's like some of the most beautiful times in my life. Like the memories are heightened yeah. in that time frame, not just the ones with my partner. Just all of my life's memories during that time were amazing. It was some of the greatest career highlights. It was some of the greatest moments with my mom. When I was actually just like in love and just relishing in that energy and in that space, I do think we really need each other, even if it's not always romantically, just being like you talked about on the on the school ground, like yeah. being protective of each other, yeah. being considerate of each other, not calling each other out of out of our out of each other's names or constantly making it like this when it needs to be like this. Right. You know what like, it is? yeah, I'm a lot. And I'm a, I, I was a latchkey kid. Me too. You know what I'm saying? So you can relate to yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So oh, I get emotional when I start thinking. It's all right. It's a safe space. Things. It's a safe space. You know? Um, but yeah, like I, you know, recent discovery again through therapy, realizing that I've always had me from an early age. Mm-hmm. I had me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not to discredit my mom or my dad or, you know, but I had me. Yeah. Early. Mm-hmm. I had to figure a lot out on my own. Mm-hmm. Early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, and I've always had me. So, as a man, probably one of the dopest, refreshing, beautiful things that we can hear from a black woman is like, I got you. Mm. Or I want to take, or, or the words that I want to take care of you. Don't misconstrue it though. I don't need you to be my mama. I don't need you to put a car in my name. I don't need you. <laughs> right. You, you, yeah, you know, sure. When I say it, you know what I mean? But those are probably some of the dopest words I've, I've ever heard. Like, from a woman. From a woman. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, now, then you got to get into the other part of it. What does that mean? You sure. know, across the board. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the motive? You know, what was that come with? Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the misconception that women don't think that men want to hear that or need that or that it makes them weak or that we're going to feel weak when we when we hear that. Yeah. Or we think that that's a green light to like run basically like you. run over you or live off of you or something like mm-hmm. nah, Like, And I think know. it's so important too because what I want women to understand is when we say that even in the beginning or as you go throughout your relationship, you may not see that side, but when a man does take an opportunity to open up and really show that side, if you fumble that experience, that could dictate a lot in that relationship. Cause he took this moment to where he's normally holding things down, being emotionally the rock in every part of the relationship. And the moment that he opens up, to really be like, yo, I need this or I need to express something. I need to get something off my chest and shows that vulnerability and you fumble that and you don't receive it or you like mm-hmm. brush it off thinking that he'll just be fine. He, you know, he good. He's he always man, strong. He he's a man. It. Mm-hmm. It's like that in his mind would be like, yo, I the moment that I just opened up and told you everything and made t- express mm-hmm. my feelings and you just rejected me, that could impact the you, relationship. You, in the usually, future. usually that's the beginning of the end. Yeah. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen. Cause yeah, I now it's like dang, I did it once I exposed myself. Mm-hmm. And that you, that mean, that means it won't be it won't happen again. And now I gotta skillfully, tactfully figure out how to make my exit. Yeah. Wow. I don't. I do not. 
I don't disagree. It's real. I don't disagree. It's a it, that's I'm so glad you both said that because that's such a gem for women. It's and such it might, a gem. It for might us. be it might be three days from now, mm -hmm. twelve months from now, three years from now. Don't make it three years. Some, I mean, but some people <laughs> you right. like that's what I'm saying. Be like long distance, long term long -term, breakups. long term breakups. Mm. Like you just you just walking into a enormity of dysfunction every day. Yeah, or allowing. It every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of a hot guy summer, you, you have a new project. Yes, you do. The yes. Summer of Love. That's a great segue right there. Yes. Mm. It's a it's it's That's why you guys are in the one percent projectile. Hello. I just want to remind <laughs> hey, you hey, if you don't you know what you're listening to, you better understand. <laughs> okay. Dude, Hello, let's here. get focused, people. Let's get focused. Don't you check don't you touch the dial. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your iPhone up, your Android up right now. Listen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. We were talking I'm, about the summer I, of love. That's yes, right. Yes, that's yes. right. Yes. You know, taking a, a listen at it, it definitely one of the things I love the most about the project is how interlude heavy it is. As a 90s R&B girl, the, the interludes used to be just as important as the songs. But let's get to the meat, though. Let's get to the meat. Okay. Let's get to the meat. Though. Let's get to the meat okay. on the meat. The meat. Did you listen to the clean oh, or the no. explicit version? I don't listen, I listen to, to no. the explicit. Yeah, I was like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't I don't even listen to clean, clean music, version. really. <laughs> If the music got to already come clean, like like a gospel song or something, otherwise I got to <laughs> listen to it the way that it's supposed to be heard. For sure. Um, but it also, the songs really made me think about like summer nights, like summer, that those those Feel very good sexy, good, loving yeah. summer nights. I love to hear that. Like, yeah. Not for the ego, but it when you put the work in that I put into my craft and what I do, mm -hmm. it lets me know that you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, because that's some that's summer love, that's summer sex. It's a different experience than the other seasons. It yeah. really, it really is. Especially when you're from an area like this, to where you only got like a certain pocket of that time of summer. Of, of yeah. summer you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it's definitely a yeah. different feel. Yeah. So talk to us about that process, how how it came together, kind of your mindset around putting that together. It's crazy. Um, I put the summer of love project together rather quickly. It kind of I recently changed distributors. Okay. okay. Um, I can't get into the like the particulars because there's a non-disclosure involved. Okay. But I recently changed distributors. Shout out to United Masters, by the way. They got a impeccable um, accounting system. A lot of the new companies do. Like accounting is everything. Yeah. Um, you know, the accountability of the accounting and just the easy process. You know what I mean? Of things. So. I recently like moved my masters over there and I wanted to like just t test out the system and the algorithm and I was excited, you know, to um, be in a new space and be able to ha get people on the phone and, 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 and that whole thing. And I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta do a project real quick. Mm -hmm. And some, and, 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 and on the summer of love, the only song, that was, I would say that probably was like pre pre recorded. Mm -hmm. um, is let it flow, mm -hmm. which was originally part of a, and probably still will be part of a um, erotic audio sound book. Okay. Then I'm song book that I'm working on with um, the poet Rob Brown. Okay. Oh, who's a spoken word artist who's been on the last few of my projects. Nice. She's um, she's also on you know on the summer of love. Mm -hmm. Um. Her piece was was spicy. Yeah, it was spicy. <laughs> Very spicy. Trip, <laughs> trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so 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 so. I just I just went. You know, when I when I, once I get in my zone zone zone, it, it kind of happens quickly. I mean, mm -hmm. I can literally put a project together in a matter of days. You wow. know what I mean? If that's, you know, meaning like the recording process and mm -hmm. pulling tracks and. You know, mm -hmm. go on the vault, grab a song or two here to make, mm -hmm. you know, what 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 what's the story, what's the focus of what I'm trying to convey. Yeah. yeah. You know? And um, you know, one of the one of the one of the jewels that, that I would say that I from a previous relationship, um, a previous lover, she said, I always operate and you know, always try to operate in love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's it's um 
I feel like it has a 90s R&B nostalgia to it, yeah. but I kind of describe it as like the 90s 2023 mm. of soul and R&B. Yeah. You know, I feel like it's just the right um, BPMs. And, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but the whole experience is like 30 minutes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Which was by design as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the recent conversations, uh, you know, uh, with Tank and interludes and stuff like yeah. that, mm-hmm. you know, I was inspired to... You know, uh, and I've always kind of had interludes, interludes yeah, like true. every other mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. every other album. If you know, it's kind of like a method to the madness with me. Like mm-hmm. every other album, typically is like a con- it's a little more conscious than the than the last. Yeah. You know, um, I haven't went overkill. You know, since twenty twenty, where I dropped um, "What a Time to Be in Love" during the pandemic mm-hmm. um, with two. I didn't want to make anything. Right, I've been in a space of not wanting to make anything too heavy, mm-hmm. mm. um, because times are already super heavy. heavy. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. You know Judging what I mean? The, the temperature, of the time. Yeah. So, um, I want to bring. I wanted to make something that brings you know people together and something for the intimacy and just kind of just to spark, to, to spark the conversations. You know, the soundtrack to what would be like the summer of love. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, and. Uh, it's being received well. Good. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm actually in the process of remixing it right now. Okay. So, yeah. If, Adding some some more. Yeah. Well, it's just I'm I'm remixing it. Like okay. so, it'll be it'll be there may be a a, a, a song or two added, but okay. Got you. I'm literally taking it and deconstructing it and reconstructing and it, it. Nice. right? And remixing it. Also which, very '90s. Yeah, which will be yeah. which which will be for what is. Uh oh, I feel like it's a probably little, little exclusive. Titled "Fall in Love." Mm. Ooh. You know what I mean? Ooh. Love that. Yes, yeah, come so on, the, season. So it's gonna have a different season. level. So it's gonna have a little yeah. different uh. season feel to it. Mm-hmm. You know, there may be some standout single, single or two that drops. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got something in mind that, okay. you know, that so I just cooking. recorded. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm, I'm constantly cooking. You know, yeah. The fact that I don't um, write lyrics down or writing anything down in my in my recording process is like in real time really it makes it very easy to create because i can you know i can hear i literally sometimes a lot of times i hear the i hear the beat or i hear the production it's like yo cut the mic on like i don't it's to a point where i do not like to listen to music or tracks unless i'm in the studio because you want to hear that inspiration as soon soon as they cut it on like 30 30 30 30 seconds in 60 seconds in i already hear what i want you know i know what it is kind of like no it just like it comes out yeah that's impressive you know so and it's been like it's been like that for some it's been like that for probably almost 20 years now i I mean back to beyond 20 years actually because Mm -hmm. i've been creating like that for a long time Oh, 25 years of creating like that. Wow. The Love Experience album was created like that. Just I can't, going off. Yeah, I never really, you know, there was a early in my career, like as a songwriter, my mm-hmm. cop and state days, mm-hmm. you know. Shout out to cop. 99, 2000, <laughs> you know, I'm carrying around, you know, mm-hmm. pad. the journal and the pen yeah. and the pad. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I just got fascinated or, you know, I heard that that's how, um, I heard that you know that's how like artists like Jay Z would record. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Wayne is known like for that Wayne. Too. Yeah, I know, the work ethic of Tupac. I know Tupac would actually write mm-hmm. lyrics, but the work ethic, you know, what I mean, yeah. in terms yeah. of standing in the studio, and then you know, R and B legends that we that, we, that some of these names that we that are unmentionable. Yeah. These, you know that we don't talk about. These, we don't mention uh, certain people yeah. anymore. Yeah. Listen, one of my favorite songs of yours yeah. is. Oh uh, yeah, is is with him? Yeah, mm-hmm. that, yeah. yeah. So a beautiful, yeah. beautiful song though. Yeah, I, which which is that's a whole that's a whole another story. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how he got on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, well, we'll move right on from that. Yeah, yeah, right there. I know I ain't send it. Okay. You know what I'm wow. Oh wow. And, that, and that's not and that's not a shot. Like that's yeah. that's, more, that's, that's, that's 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 music rap. business. That's, yeah. but that's the business. He did that on yeah. He did that on his own. He did that. He did that like. 
he did. What was that. your thought process after it though? When it came, it was, it was, was I was, I was, I was torn mm. because I was torn at that time because being a huge fan. Yeah. Prior to prior prior to knowing and hearing the whispers of what um what the world knows now. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back at that time. Yeah, so I was torn. So I was already like on some like, nah, mm-hmm. I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. You know this what I mean? This is a great song. Like, yeah, it, 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 it was <laughs> I'm one of the I'm one of the few I'm cool. Like, you know, that was a it was a it was a hit. Yeah, before, for sure. Before, you know, in its original form. That's yeah. what mm-hmm. That's what made him go do it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. So, so it was kind of like flattering. Like I was like, okay, mm-hmm. got him, got him. I know, I know, I, I know. If I got that ear, yeah, I feel you. Then I got the world ear. Yeah. If I got his ear, that makes sense. To that point where he took my record and and and, and, and remixed it without me having to ask, mm-hmm. beg, mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. Just because it reminded him of something he would do. Mm. Yeah. Even though that wasn't the attention, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like, oh yeah, I'm on. I'm oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm on to something. Yeah. I done yeah. crack. I done. I I done crack the code. Yeah. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. Because every because because be- everybody else on this label, they they get forced to sent to have to go out there to do. To yeah. Go do it. It's like mm-hmm. go do it or. Yeah. Or else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, or like that's you a need to, you need to go do this. Yeah. You know that's what I mean? So interesting. So yeah. So so yeah. I mean. Um, so like, yeah, so, and then of course, like, you know, artists like Marvin Gaye and, mm. and Prince, you know, I don't, I, I, I know what Marvin, Marvin's process was, he would record all the background vocals and stuff first. Mm. Just follow me on this. So everything that you hear oh. around the lead, he would go record the oohs, the ahs, the hooks, wow. the, all of those, all the things vocally. Before he would lay the lead last. Mm. So what is that like? Hear, hearing the melody first, kind of, and playing it's around. A, that? It's a little like, deeper than that. It, it's like he, you know, they do the production, and that's then interesting. and then yeah. and then and then um, okay, take a song like "What's Going On," for example. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the eyes in the back, mm-hmm. you know, and and um, uh, and then and then of course like the hook. What's going on? Um. The background is like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Mm-hmm. So he would lay all of that, all of, he would lay all the background first. stuff first. Whereas typically, for me, my process, so I start with the hook. Oh, hook, okay. Typically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless, 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 it, unless it's just speaking to me, now, there's been a couple of tunes where I'll do the verse first, mm-hmm. or I'll do both the verses, and I'll do the hook last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, let it flow was one of those situations. Okay, okay. but that was the last part last of it. Piece. You know what I mean? Because okay. I knew like the hook had to be so like lush, and yeah. I, just, I just had to wait and let it hit me. May I come? You know, I, I walk away from it, come back come to back. it. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, for me, it was typically it's the hook, and once I get the hook, it's like Dennis. Dennis, you know. I paint the rest of the Picasso and do the verses, the bridge, you know, or say, say, hey, like, we need to put up a musical bridge in here. Or, you know, I tend to do bridges over uh, the same melody of the song because I don't want to take the listener away from the groove. Yeah. You know, wow. mute a bass, do, you know, um, drop the drums out, whatever the, whatever case may be, you know. But, yeah, the the creative process is just like, man, it's just like, I would kind of descri- describe it probably as it's like downloads in real time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, totally. It's, like, it's just God whispering in your ear what to say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and that's why I'm super um, cognizant of what I, you know, what I choose to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, of course I love I love sex, I love women, mm-hmm. I love intimacy, I love, you know, I love to make those records. Yeah. Um, but again, when it comes to talking, you know, your records like Woman, mm-hmm. you know, a Bulletproof, you know, those are those are some of my most proudest moments, you know, of God's whispers because, I, you know, just like God whispers in your ear, the devil can whisper in your ear too. That's true. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's a conscious decision to decide, like, what I want to talk about and use that superpower for, for, 
for the will of good, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Because um, no matter how they try to convince us that the world is just, you know, you can be fooled by some, by social media that the world is just like a dark place, but the world is still very much a beautiful, beautiful, amazing place. Yeah. In space, you know, so... Uh, so I so I try to focus on just making like beautiful, soulful R and B records that remind you of the nineties. Nineties nineties was just like the best time for me. Yeah. You know, some Same. some my major influences, you know, a lot of them are either from my influences are either from the nineties. Either they put out their best body work in the nineties or they put it out like in the, you know, nineties, seventies, in the eighties. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they mm-hmm. they that's what that's what raised me, that's what birthed me musically, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Sure. So um You very much get that from you. Yeah, so I hope sure. that whenever people listen to the music that they, you know, it, mm-hmm. it 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 makes them feel that way. But it doesn't feel dated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it feels and, fresh. Yeah, it's it got it's gotta feel it's gotta feel fresh, man. It's gotta feel fresh. I'm proud of the summer love. I feel like I created some type of nostalgic um, body of work. Mm-hmm. It reminds me, uh, if it was longer, it probably would be, you could probably put it up against the love experience. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But for where I am with it right now, I think it's a, a great representation of what, you know, um, what I want people to hear and, and, and you know, and it, and and it gave me, like I said, it gave me an opportunity to test out the new system as well, which I'm which I'm digging to. Nice, awesome, I awesome. love it, awesome. Well, last question: We, as a singer, as a songwriter, it doesn't oh, have yeah. to be your song, but it can be mm-hmm. any song. It can, of course, be your song. But what song best describes your real life love scenario today? Mm. What song describes? My real life, my current state right now, yeah. my mood, my mood, your mood, <laughs> specifically around love, though. Okay. Um. Mm. I don't know why this random song popped in my head, but what song what, popped in your head? No, nah, it's just <laughs> what song popped in your head? <laughs> uh, Dinga Max. What these bitches <laughs> want from it? It's always that song. It's always that song. <laughs> Woo. Okay. <laughs> it's a great song. I would say, <laughs> with a great R and B act on it too. Shout out to Cisco. I would say, um, Pound Town. Oh no, no, not, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, I could, I could. Look, I was like, no, we're not accepting that as the I answer. Could, I could. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who goodness? Shout out to Sassy Red. For sure. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I'm sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> it does, can it be like a whole album? Sure. sure. Of course. I would go with the uh, Marvin Gaye, I Want You album. Mm. Mm, that, I'm going to have to listen to that after this. That's forever my mood. Forever your mood. Is yeah. Distant Lover on that album? No. Damn. Okay, that's my favorite Marvin Gaye song. So Should explain, have been. explain that uh like that choice though. Why why that's just my mood. Like that's a that's this this is the vibe. This is the vibe. Okay. Like Marvin was that was that dude. Yeah, yeah he was. And, Him and his mean? red and, beanie. And from and you know, and from and for my and for, for 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 my era, I'm that dude. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean? Got it. Like, you know. Um, it can only be one Marvin Gaye, it can only be one Raheem Devon, it can only be one, you know, um, Kenny Babyface Edmonds. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yes, God. Um, there's only one Joe to see. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, um, I think we, you know, we're, we're, it's a lot of great stuff out there, a lot of great um, music that's coming out weekly, monthly. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there that is in a similar vein, mm-hmm. kind of. You can't really de- decipher who's who. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. True. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm. I just. I just. I came into this at a different time, so I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. You know, 
I understand. The, I understand what the architects created mm-hmm. and what they left behind. The scrolls that they left behind, mm-hmm. the soul and R and B scrolls that they left behind. You know, so um, I'm gonna just stay true to this. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And and continue to um, do it as long as I I'm in love with it. Yeah. You yeah, know, and sure. I hope that people feel it and hear it and, and embrace it. I think the biggest probably frustration would be the fact that we live in a microwave world. Yeah. You know, and, and, and how, you know, people um, are distracted by so much that, you know, sometimes they got to, it takes them a minute to catch up and they're like, oh man, got a new project out. Or, you know, but tip, typically I put out at least two projects a year. That's impressive. Yeah, typically. If you yeah. if you look at my, if you look at the, re, you know, look at my resume, look at the track regular. If you look, you know, look at what I've dropped since 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've dropped um, a lot of music since 20, just to, since 2019, 2020. You know, What a Time to Be in Love, From Lust to Dawn, Raheem Devon Presents, B-Boy Soul. Mm. Um, there's two versions of that project. Yeah. Um, the Summer of Love, uh, the Love Sick album, um, which was produced by Apollo Brown, nice mm. out of Detroit. Um, yeah, he then worked. we got the then then there's the features. You know, the yeah. record with yeah. Keith, the record with Keith Sweat. Love. You know, which was, was was a top was one of the biggest R and B records last year. Love you know, it. 2022, um, top ten. It was one of the top ten R and B songs of the year. Love um, that. Man. A lot of lot the, the Tanya Nolan mm-hmm. uh, duet, which is out right now, and shout out to Tanya Nolan. She has a new single out called "Let's Celebrate," which was written by myself and produced by the colleagues. Um, yeah, it's a lot of cool things. A lot of stuff happening. A lot of sure. things. A lot of things happening. A lot of things on the way. There's a Marvin Gaye album on the way. I won't say which songs from the catalog just yet, but there's definitely a. Wow, it's that's not, dope. It's not. It's not a a mood like a Marvin Gaye mood album. Saying like. Lily songs that from the catalog that you know and if you know anything about the gay family yeah. they don't they don't they don't play about his catalog they don't play oh, about a, about yeah. allowing people to use his music yeah. mm-hmm. and that like yeah. so to get that blessing yeah that's, well that's, it's 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 a remake album so yeah gotcha. yeah. yeah i just you know want to get to just the particulars of what songs right right um so yeah, there's some there, there's some there, there's some red, red tape that needs to be cut, but it's, sure. I think it's gonna be an easy. You know, we're sorting it out. I think it's gonna be an easy process. That's yeah, so yeah. dope, though. Um, that is amazing. Um, I think where that where that where that where that thing is is like people people doing these interpolations and, uh-huh. yeah. and the samples, flipping it and trying to the samples mm-hmm. and flipping it and taking and they the find out fast and losing the yeah, integrity of taking it. the melody. Yeah. And, you know, just yep. just not you know sampling it and not giving the credit where the credit is due for That's sure right. and cutting the check to go along with it for sure. yeah that's it yeah. that's it oh man we thank you so we much appreciate for being you coming here through, today man. this is great this is amazing oh, we got to you. sit with the love king and the first man first to have man a conversation on real love scenario oh, so this you blessed us today real love scenario yes sir. i am no longer virgin <laughs> <laughs> we, we, and we. and if you don't want to be a virgin <laughs> i encourage you to come out and See one of my shows. We there you go. go. Ticketmaster.com. We got the Birchmere coming up. I know okay. this is probably, when does this air? Uh, this will air in September, so like the f- first or second week of September. Okay, well then, in that case, I just killed the Birchmere. <laughs> <laughs> we just shut it down. Two sold out shows at the Birchmere. That part. Uh, yeah, we, and, and we just shut down Detroit, uh, Michigan as well with Bilal. Shout out oh, to my man Bilal from from from, 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 you from Philly. Must be in my soul. Yeah, it's you know one of my you're, yeah, it's you're, one of you're my Philly songs. comrade. Yeah, the, the good brother Bilal, man, F- phenomenal talent. Yes, and um, yeah, so much more on the way. You know, w- the winner of love touring. Love it. Yeah, love the winner it, love of love it. is love on the that. way. Winner of love is on the way. Raheem sure Devine, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. <laughs> but before winner, <laughs> <laughs> fall in love. Fall in love. You Thank heard it here so first. Much. Thank y'all so much for having me. Yeah, no problem, yes, man. Of course. Yeah, you, we, we're looking to do a lot of, a lot of the. You know, I'm I'm, I'm about to do a series podcast blitz, nice. and um, we couldn't do it properly without, you know, coming to 
the best of the best because this is. <laughs> They in the one percent, y'all. Okay, Jack no, right? okay. And, looks, and, and from the looks of it, the way it sound, the way it look, they had it the number one. <laughs> you heard it yeah. from Raheem Devon. That's that's, that's I'm Bible. Just, you know, I'm just I'm just I'm just claiming it. <laughs> in the Girl. name of Jesus, <laughs> there it is. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you.